Thank you for being here with us today. My name is Kafaya. I am a community learning specialist with Do Space, and I would be presenting this session for today. So what I have planned for us today is Canacode. Have you ever heard of Canacoding before? Have you used this website before? You can let me know in the chat or feel free to use your voice if you're more comfortable with that. I will keep my chat handy so I can look if you have any questions or comments or anything, just so I know your video is not on. I can only hear your voice if you unmute yourself. Cool, so we're gonna go ahead with today's class. And like I said earlier, it's Cano Coding. So what, we're going, what we have planned for today is to create an account and then, so that way everything that you work on on the website is saved in your account and you can always go back to continue as often as you'd like. So let's get started. Okay. So like I said earlier, today's plan is to understand the interface of Cano Code and to complete a few of the challenges that they have on the website, these challenges would help us understand the different tools and how to work with them. And it will be like teaching us a few games. So you can go ahead and build your game as often as you would like. There's no other students at the moment. It's just you and I right now. Okay, so the first thing to do would be to go to the website at canocode.com. I would send you the, the link to the website in the chat box right now. Give me a second. So I just put the link to the website in the chat box. So if you click on it, it would take you to where you can go create an account for yourself. So the first step, of course, would be to generate a username and that you can mix up anything that you like. It could be the name of your favorite superhero. It could be Batman, Iron Man, and of course you need a number. So maybe Batman, Iron Man 2 or anything that you'd like. It could be cup, kettle, anything. Just be as creative as you want with creating your username. And then after you get done with this step, you click on continue and it takes you to the next screen. So by now it recognizes your username and that would be what would pop up here, the generated username. And the next thing to do is to create a secret password, a password that you don't tell anyone, of course. So yeah, that's how to go about it. And once you're done with a password, make sure to write it down just for your own personal reference. So you can always remember or have it somewhere in case if you forget. So let me know in the chat if you're doing this along with me because for this next step, you would need an adult because you need an email, right? So either your parent or whichever adult is with you you need a valid email address for them so they can give you the go ahead to use this website and yeah. So, and of course you go ahead and select what region you're in. It's clicked United States because that's where I currently am. I don't know where you're calling me from, but yeah, after you do that, you click on continue and it takes you here. So this is where you would need your parents or guardian who whoever, whichever adult is with you would need to approve that they're giving you, they're letting you have access to this website before you can start playing, okay? So let's go ahead and see what that's like. So once you're done creating your account, let me know in the chat so I can start with the challenges. I'll give you like two minutes or just let me know if you're working along with me and if you're doing the challenges so we can so we can get started 
But for sure, we're going to start with learning what blocks are and then the different challenges that there are like loops one and loops two among others. But the first thing we need to do is create an account. So give me a thumbs up or raise your hand once you're done with that so we can go from here. So like I said, we're going to explore the basics of Kano code and to do that, I would go into the website. This is what your interface should look like. This is what you should see once you're done logging in and you've created an account. And this should give you a list of all the other activities, all the fun things that you can do once you're done learning the basics. It looks so colorful and exciting. Even I am curious and I'm going to come back to explore what they have to for us. So the first one, the coding basics, is where we're starting today. So what are blocks? The good thing about this is that it helps us, um, it gives us hints so we know what to do next and we follow along. So I'm just going to read the instructions and do exactly what the yellow beaming light tells me to do. So welcome to Canna Code. Follow the instructions in the box. The yellow beacon shows you the next step, next click to get, click next to get started. So click on next. And I'll go ahead and change the background color to blue. Awesome. And then everything that we code over here in this workspace would appear on the canvas. It's very cool. So next. So the way that Canna Code website works is the click and drag method of coding. So you click on something and hold it down from here and bring it to your workspace. Awesome. So we're moving on to the next challenge. These are the blocks and the blocks that we use for Kano coding are always displayed on the left pane or the left tray and your code is executed on the right. So the middle space right here is where we would do a lot of work and experimentation. Got it? So let's go on to the next challenge which is the loops Swiss cheese. I like cheese, I don't know if you do too, but let's see what they have to say about cheese. Computers are great at doing something over and over. In coding, this is called a loop. Time to create Swiss cheese using the power of loops. Let's see. So it says to go to the draw. And then remember, we click and we drag right here. And the next thing we were doing, just like we did in the previous challenge, is to change the color of the background. So I would click on this and choose the color that I think looks exactly like what they want us to have here. Okay, awesome. And now we're going to the control tray and we're clicking and dragging right here. And now back to draw, we'll click and drag. Back to draw again, we're going to click and drag for a fill color. So now we want to change the color that we're filling our background with to orange, because currently we have black. So I'll click on that and then go pick the shade of orange that I think works best for what I want. And I'll go back to draw and click and drag. Now I would be changing the number five to 20, just as requested. And now every second, a new hole would be made in the cheese, but they're all the same size. Time to use a random number of blocks to make each hole a different size. 
So I'm going to click on next and go back to my math tray and then drag this block of block that says random number from zero to 10 and put it right here so we can generate random radius and then change this from zero to 40. Awesome, look, we have completed that. So now they give us a little hint to try and change this block. So what we're going to do is do something regarding the time as to how fast the, the circle comes up. So let's try zero, zero seconds makes it ridiculous. So we're gonna do 0 0.5 right here. And as you can see, it is slow enough, but not as fast as it was when it was zero seconds. So I would go down a little bit, so it'll be a bit faster. I would go down to 0 0.2. See, that's fast enough, but it's not overwhelming. Okay, so this is what you should have once you complete the challenge. It's just a loop where different circles of different sizes of random sizes appear in different parts of the cheese. Awesome. So if you're working with me, let me know if you're caught up to this stage and we can go from there. So I would show you what my code looks like so you can have a side-by-side -side comparison to what you have. So let me know in the chat if you have a question or if something is unclear to you. Okay, Let's see. Great, it looks like no questions. So I will be moving on to the next challenge. This challenge is also regarding loops and it is called spinner. I'm very curious to see what we're spinning. Okay. Loops are useful for adding animation to your creations. Use a loop to make the sticker spin. Let me go. So now I have a crocodile. So we're using loops to make this spin. Let's see. In the sticker tray, sticker image, crocodile. Change the crocodile to any sticker you would like. Do you wanna make a suggestion on what I should change my sticker to? Or should we just leave it as a crocodile? Let's browse through the options that they have. They have animals, they have food, they have faces, <laughs> they have music, very cool. They have street art, very cool. Okay, let's just stick to our animals or should we do food? Let's do candy, because everybody likes candy. Okay, so now we're going to the controls tab and we will drag this block of code right here where it says to place it. And we go back to the sticker tray and drag the block of code that would make it turn. Okay, and this sticker would make it turn in the right rotation and we're going to set the degrees to 10. So our block of code is going to rotate every one second, but that might be a bit slow. So let's change it to 0 0.5 seconds. <laughs> Did you see how it was spinning out of control when we had it at zero? So let's put five seconds, just so it's sane. Cool, got it. Let's keep going. Then let's see. We saw how much faster it rotated when we had it at zero. So let me do 0 0.2 so it's not too fast, but not too crazy, <laughs> like when it's on zero like this. Very cool. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So we're going to change seconds to frames from the drop down list to run every code frames. So right here, and now it's spinning fast. 
try changing one to 20. Okay, well, I have it at 0.2. So let's change it to 20, just like you requested. And now if you look here, use the seconds loop to make the code turn so often. And if you want to write animation code, use the one frame so the code runs every time. Let's see. So this is what my final product is. My code is spinning, but not out of control. So let's go back to the next challenge. So now we have variables and dancing bugs, very interesting. Variables are a way of storing numbers or words in one place that can be used in many places in your code. Did you say something in the chat? Let's see. Okay. How to make a character jump. We would get to that stage. Let's just run through these challenges and then we would, you might even be able to tell me how to make the character jump. So let's run through these challenges and we would get there. Okay. So variables, okay, we already read that part. Let's go on to the next one. Using a variable, all these bugs can be made to dance at the same time. Okay. Let's go to the variable stripes and then set item to we're going to set the speed and go back to zero. And we're changing zero to 10. Okay. And we're going to the control tab. And oopsie. Frame, just like we did in the last one. And we're starting with coding the centipede. So we would make the centipede turn in would, it's turning to the right and we're changing that to speed. As you can see, our centipede is turning in its place. Because the variable speed is set to 10, the centipede spins 10 degrees every frame. Now to make the bee spin two, we're going to go to the bee tree and put it right here and go to the variable. So we're doing the same thing with the centipede, the bee, and we're changing item to speed. And so now he spins, but we want it to spin in a different direction. So we're doing the opposite way. Cool. So now we're going to do the ladybug. And put her right here and back to the variables tab to drag the item block and put it right here. And we will change that to speed. Now, we're changing this from 10 to 100. <laughs> Can you see how they're all spinning so crazy and out of control? We need to put a hold on that. So right here, we would go from 100 to two. And that way, we can see that all of our bugs are dancing slowly in the same or different directions. They're having fun. They're taking their time with the spinning. No one's spinning their head off here. Okay, so let's move on to the next challenge. This, for this challenge, we're learning about loops and patterns. So let's get started. Loops are useful for running the same code over and over again a number of times. 
let's use loops to create a striped pattern. So we're going to the draw tab first. And the first thing we're doing, of course, is to set our background. And I, and I want to set my background to this color. So next, we're going to draw. And for this, we're setting transparency to That is very cool that you made your bugs jump. You're so ahead of the game. That's very, very cool. I'm glad you're working along with me. Very cool, keep it up. Okay, let's see what cool things you can do with the lines in this one that we're working on right now. Cool. I like that you're having fun with this. So we're changing 100 to 50. And we're going back to the draw panel and we would click and drag. So we're changing the color black to yellow. And now we're changing the thickness because we want it to have really fat lines. We're changing our thickness to 40. So now we would go back to the draw panel and click and drag and place it. So now we're changing minus five to minus 600. This would tell the X line where to move to. And for Y, we're changing it to minus 30, just as the instruction says. And now go to the controls tab and click and drag. Now we are to change 10 to 13 and go back to the draw one and click drag and place it. And now we're changing five to 1000 and we're changing the next five to 1000. And now we're going here, we're placing it right here. We're doing the same thing, but this time we're changing it to 100. 100 and 150. Cool. Awesome. And then this is going to be zero. I made a mistake. Next, we're going to the controls tray and we would tell it how many times to repeat. And we open the draw panel and we click, drag and place. And this is minus 1000 and this would be 1000. Awesome. And we go to the draw panel and click and drag. This feels very repetitive, but it is fun. Minus 150. And we're changing our 5 to 0. Awesome. So this is what the code finally executed for me. I wonder if you have the same thing. You should let me know in the chat. Oops, already did. Okay, negative 600, I apologize. Next challenge, color names. Variables can store more than just numbers. They can store words and sentences too. Start by creating a variable. Open the variables tray. Set item to color name. Back to variables. Okay.
I'm just following the instructions on the screen. We go back to variables and item. Nice. See how both the text and the background color have changed the blue because they're both using the same variable. Next. Try changing the variable change blue to green. See. Also, this is very smart. And let's change green to orange. Oops. Nice. Very, very cool. So let me know so far if you have any questions or if you're, well, you've been doing that. So let's go on to the next challenge. This might be the last one we're able to do today. Let's see. In this challenge, you will use code to draw a diagram of the coronavirus cell. Get started with drawing the viral membrane. Very interesting. So let's click and follow the instructions. Click and drag in place. So we're changing this to red. Hmm. 1 to 20. I hope you're working along with me and just following the instructions on the screen. Need the brighter yellow. Cool. And now I'm going to draw a circle with the radius of 200. Wow. Next, we are going to draw a circle with 10 copies. Okay, change six to ten. Back to drawing. We're turning it where to move. We're changing five to zero in the next five to two hundred. And now we are drawing a line down. We're changing five to zero. We're changing five here to 60. Back to the draw and doing the same thing. We're changing five to zero and the other five to 60. Now back to draw. We're gonna click and drag and place it. And we're changing this color black to red. See. Cool. And now we are going to draw an eclipse with, let me move this up so you can see clearer. We're changing 5 to 30. And now We're changing the color black to blue. Let's see. Awesome. And now, click and drag in place. So we're changing this five to zero and this one to negative 150. So back to variables, we'll set item to here, counter, back to the variables tray, and drag this zero right here, and open the control tray, and click, and drag, and place. 
this to 150. Go back to the draw pane and click and drag and place. So change five to zero, as we've been doing, and change this five to two. Awesome. Variables, click and drag and place. Just following the instructions on the screen. Go back to the math tray, click and drag and place. We're changing the positive sign to the multiply sign. And now we're back here. Doing some math, variables, item. Changing item to counter. And then we're changing zero to 10. Back to the variables tray. We're setting item to, okay. Spiral Y, go back here, click and drag and place. So we're changing this to the multiply sign right here. Do the same thing that we did earlier. And now we're changing it to cost. Go back here. Change that to counter. And change zero to eight. So now we're going to draw a circle with a radius of five. And back here, we're drawing more circles. Now, item, Spiral Y. Math. Click and drag and place. So we're clicking an item and changing it to counter. And then now we're going back to the math tray and we're going to select a random number from 10 to 30. See? We're changing 10 to 30. So a random number from zero to 30. So this hmm, let me see. Oh. Look at my diagram. It looks nothing like I thought. I wonder what your diagram looks like. You should show me. <laughs> okay, let me exit out. That is the end of our session today. That was fun. Please feel free to let me know what you think. I don't want to keep you for longer. Oh, I'm here, I'm waiting. Do you have a question? Oh, I'm unable to see your screen right now. But if you have anything cool that you wanna show me, please feel free to send us an email at hello at do space.org. How do I get your screen on? How do you get my what? How do I, how do I get share screen on? Oh, it's not, there's no access to share screen right now. I can only like, show you my screen. You can't show me yours. Can I get, I, on Webex, you can get, you can give someone presenter permissions. Oh, not at the moment. And we kind of have exhausted all the time that we have together today. So maybe next time. But you can 
feel free to send me an email at hello at dospace.org. I would for sure oh. answer any questions that you might have. Oh, thank you I'm, for joining me. I'm just going to show you what it is. Okay. All right. Bye. Is it on Scratch? Yeah, I do all my coding on Scratch. That's very cool. I really like Scratch too. So I'll check it out. Did you just put it in the chat? You can send me a link to your. I just sent. Your Scratch profile. I'll check it out. Okay, but where do I send? Where do I send the link? Hello at dospace.org. Okay. Bye. Awesome. Bye. Have a good day.